Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back. And we have the Scorpiansky, yes, the SU 130 PM has been released. SU 130 PM Tier 8 Russian Premium TD with a turret. Look at that bad boy. And you can see that the winter challenge is going to start on the 30th, which is a day or two from now, depending on when I get this out. But we're going to review this tank. And I just wanted to let you know that this was there. And it is the go through 10 stages thing, buy it at 80%, 70%, 60%, whatever you get to kind of event that we've had for the last couple. Remember it's a base XP and you will gain rewards for each one of these that you go to. And when you buy it, if you're say at stage eight, you'll get all of the stuff up to stage 10, no matter what you've already earned. All right, so that's good. Go ahead and do that. And let's get into the review itself. We'll go to the garage and there it is, the Scorpiansky, the Sioux 130. PM. Pretty good tank. Pretty good tank. We're going to talk about it as we go, but I'm going to give you that little bit of advice right at the beginning. It's pretty good. And since you can get it for free, people will always ask me, is it worth it? Well, I don't know. It's your time. I think so. If you're going to play the game, if you can at least get to 80% discount, maybe even 70, I think it's well worth it. What are we going to do? We're going to do an overview. Look at the tech tree considerations. Look at the 3D model. Do a comparison amongst its stable mates, both some of the premiums and some of the standard tech tree tanks. We'll take a look at my stats, my setup, and I've got about two to three examples of play. I ended up playing 20 games in this tank, so I got a little bit of a feel for it. Break, break, danger, danger, warning, warning. I did it while I was using a hotspot, so it was not the most stellar. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to blame it on that and not me. All right, let's get started with the overview. All right, for the overview of the Scorpiansky, we've got the overview ski. Get that? See how I, see what I did with that? The overview ski, see that? <laughs> look at this thing, pretty cool looking. And it looks a lot like a scorpion, except it's smaller. Look at that, the scorpion is much larger, much larger. This one does not have a full turret. We'll talk about that a little bit as we go, especially in the replays. But if you look at this little number over here, it's 77.7 .7 to each side. So about 150 degrees math and public field of regard. Actually, that's not true. What is that, 150? Oh, see, I already messed it up. <laughs> 155, is that right? Man, math is hard. Compared to some of the others, though, it's actually quite small. Some of these things are massive. The AT is smaller than you would think. It's, maybe it's just a low profile making it look like that. Taking a look against that, the charioteer, although the charioteer seems like it's very tall, it's not too much taller than it is. It's quite long, and the traverse for the hole is going to be affected by that long length right there. So pretty cool looking guy. It's open. So HE is not your friend, much like the Scorpion, which is also open. People are going to pin you right and left. But as far as size or anything like that, there's nothing too special about it. Other than, again, it's going to get that comparison against the Scorpion. It's smaller than the Scorpion, and that is a slight advantage. The Scorpion has other advantages that we'll talk about. Let's move on to the tech tree considerations for the Su-130 PM. Scorpiansky. Looking at the tech tree, you can see that it is not currently in the tech tree to buy for gold. So you've got to purchase it or win it on the contest or whatever that is, the marathon. It's a marathon. It also does not have to upgrade modules as it is a premium tank. So that's important to know. So what you're worried about here is what kind of crew trainer is it? Well, what's interesting is there aren't any tier eight TDs in the Russian line right now. So it's the first one. That's pretty good. It has five crew members, five crew members, which match up with the other five crew member tanks from the Soviet line of commander, gunner, driver, loader, loader. It takes two loaders to heft those giant stellinium rounds into the breach of the cannon. What you also want to know is that you are four crew from the Su-85 to the 100, where it splits off into the two lines for TDs and the Soviets. The 100M1 is four. The 101 is four, but it goes up to five crew at the 263 and 268B4. That thing should have never existed in this game, but that's another subject. And then it gets five at the Su-152 all the way to the Object 268. What does that mean? It means your four crew members will be trained and one of your loaders is going to be left behind. He will be the third wheel, not invited to the ball, all that kind of stuff. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Of course, unless you swap around your loaders, maybe you're that clever, but I am not. Still, though, it will train any, essentially, of your Soviet TD tanks that you like. 
So that is a good thing. Let's move on to the 3D model. And this is gonna be pretty simple. All right, well, there it is. It is in all its glory and 20 millimeters of thickness. So like I said, much like the Scorpion, unless it's some bizarre auto bounce angle or the gun, which you can see is all purple, or the tracks eating heat or HE or something like that, you are going to be pinned by everything in sight. This tank wants to stay hidden. And unfortunately, we'll talk about this a little while later, it doesn't brawl quite as well, even Krite, quite as well as the Rhine Metal Scorpion G. So the Scorpionski probably wants to hide even more than the Scorpion G does. And when it does come out, while it has some mobility to get there, it does have a little bit of trouble brawling. We'll talk about that, but there's not a whole lot to say on the 3D model. Just It gets pinned in every direction, despite that showing red. 20 millimeters, look at that. Oh, it's fantastic armor, and you can angle get up to 20.4. Look at what I've done. 21! We can... <laughs> anyway, it has no armor. That's really the point. I could have shortened all this, too. Uh, don't even look at tanks.gg. Maybe you can block things with your gun. If you're that good, good on you. All right, let's move on. Let's jump into the comparison tool for the Scorpionski. You can see I've got the Scorpion, the Canon Jagdpanzer. These are all premiums and the Sturve. So three premiums and four tech tree variants, a couple of variants with turrets on them. And of course the comparison that everyone's gonna make is the Scorpion G with the Scorpionski, the Su-130PM. Take a look at the firepower. But before I get started on that, remember that these are 100% crews, no equipment, no perks or skills, no paint, so we get a nice baseline with just 100% crew and top modules for the tanks that are tech tree tanks. 369 on the firepower, which is pretty low. You take a look at that, it's showing the lowest. So let's take a look how that breaks down. Close to top on the average damage per shot, 524 alpha, 560, the Chinese kind of an outlier, but it is higher than the Scorpion by 30 points. 243 on the pen, slightly lower than the Scorpion, and actually low amongst the rest of them. In fact, I think it is the lowest. That's not true. The Chinese is at 271. But the gold round, or the premium round, is quite a bit higher. We'll talk about that later. Interestingly, this comparison tool does not put the gold round on there. I wish it did. Rate of fire is relatively low, and that's with the 13.04 reload time. 13.42 for the WZ-111 is the worst, and the Charioteer spitting rounds downrange at a high rate with three or 968. In fact, it has the top number for firepower. That thing can really drop the herd on people. Gun Traverse, that's gonna be the traverse of the turret at 31.29, or if it's a, interestingly, it's still the same kind of idea. If it's a casemate, then it's how fast the gun moves from side to side, or if it's a sturve, it's how, it, it's also the, the uh, hull traverse, so it's a little bit different for all of those, but it's relatively slow, actually, for the tr little half turret we'll call it that, to move around. Decent depression at minus seven, that's quite a bit actually for a Russian version. For a Russian type of tank, minus seven's pretty good actually, with the Scorpion at minus seven also. Canon Jagdpanzer at eight, and of course some of the others much better. So that's right at the limit of, of comfortable. Some terrain is gonna be unusable, but it will ridge poke if the ridge isn't too steep. So that is a decent capability, and at minus seven, it won't all of a sudden be shooting above low tanks simply because you went up on a piece of rubble. You start talking about minus five, and sometimes it's very difficult even to put your gun on in a city fight because you put the front end of your tank on a tiny piece of rubble. There's the gun traverse limit at 77.75. It's, it's top in class, but that's kind of weird because it's not really a casemate like a Canon Jagdpanzer, and it's not, and it's not what 360 degree traverse like the Scorpion G is so take that for what it's worth <clears throat> the important bit there is that it's not 90 degrees to the side it's quite a bit less you start getting into a circling fight or you get circled or you have to get into a into a scrum where you're trying to maneuver and you're gonna come to that gun stop pretty quickly because people are gonna tr be trying to avoid your your gun and your turret or j simply just know that you don't have much traverse with the turret and try to sneak around behind you. Aiming time is 2.21, which is right in the middle. It's not terrible. It's not as bad as, say, the Sturve with 2.9, or as good as the Canon Jagdpanzer, which is interesting at 1.73, but it is worse than the Scorpion. I will tell you that the gun does feel a little bit worse than the Scorpion. The numbers seem to indicate that with a 0.34 dispersion and 0.29 for the Scorpion there, and it does feel that way in game. It's a little bit derpy for me, 
I had 20 games. We'll talk about the, how those went when we get there. But for me, the gun was a, a little bit derpy. Not terrible, but snapshots and moving shots and not fully aimed shots kind of went just about anywhere. The DPM is decent. It's it's down on the low part. It's not qu quite as bad as the Canon Jagdpanzer at 2000, which is horrendously bad. But it is comparable to the Scorpion G. So it's the more alpha and less rounds downrange. Like any large alpha tank, a miss really hurts because you've got such a long time. A miss or non-pen really hurts because you've got such a long time for a reload. But technically, all else being equal, it spits the ra the damage down range per minute as well as just about any of them in its class here. Hit points are on the low side, but you're only talking 50 hit points, although the Ferdinand is beefy at 1,500, an outlier there. Look at that armor. That's what I was talking about earlier. It has so little armor, the Scorpion feels like the, the big bad boy on the street. <laughs> All right, mobility. This was interesting because it's showing you know 698 better than the Scorpion. In fact, the numbers look better than the Scorpion. Specific power is slightly lower, even for only a 400 horsepower engine. It's much lighter than the Scorpion G. I don't... Um, I <laughs> These... I have no idea why. That, let's just leave it that way. Neither one of them has any armor. So why the Scorpion G is so much heavier and more robust? It is a slightly larger vehicle, so maybe that accounts for it. Anyway, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Sometimes these numbers crack me up. We are at a 65 knot top speed and 60 for the Scorpion. It's not as fast as the Canon, but 65 is reasonable. And I will tell you that when I played it, it felt fast, but it didn't feel like it was near the top. It certainly did not feel anywhere near Canon Jagdpanzer speed. Now that's probably because it's maneuverability, it's, what is it, the uh, terrain resistance, its ability to turn was a little bit sluggish in its acceleration because it is a relatively low horsepower engine. That's probably why it felt like that way. Once it got up to speed, okay, it got, got where you wanted to go, but you know, getting up and going and getting out of danger was a little bit sluggish, so it simply didn't feel as maneuverable as a Scorpion G, although the numbers show that it should be. Interestingly, it's one of the few recent Russian tanks that didn't come with a 2,000 horsepower engine. <laughs> just, just throw that out. I said that its track traverse wasn't good, and I'm going to tell you it felt sluggish, but at 37.55, it is in theory better than the Scorpion G. I... The number's there, that's what it says, but I'm going to tell you, it does not feel like that. And that may have something to do with how long that the tracks are. I don't know. That was that was a strange one, and it did surprise me when I saw that. Concealment is pretty darn good. That's where it's going to really win over the Scorpion. Everything else is kind of a push, other than maybe the brawling capability, which is not what you want to be doing really with either one, but if forced, I think the Scorpion has the advantage right there. However, from, from concealment, perspective, it's much better. It's not Sturve good, right? Sturve at 24, but it's not Ferdinand bad at 10. It's at 19, which is really kind of up there. So this is, like I said earlier, a tank you're going to want to try to keep out of sight and should have a pretty good time doing so based on its low silhouette. The, the only problem with hiding it's going to be its length, and there's plenty of other long TDs in this same class where you're dealing with the same thing. View range is right there with the rest of them. All the tier 8s are terrible except that surprised me. The prototype actually is right up there. The prototype is pretty fantastic. It, it's got a lot of top numbers where it matters. And I know I'm not reviewing it, but that, I've always liked that tank, and it's basically a heavy. Let's just let's just admit it, whereas the Charioteer is basically a medium. But those are reviews for another time. We're talking about the Scorpi and Ski. So what would I say about this thing overall? It's got a good stick with the 520. It does hit hard. 520 is an interesting number though, and I've run into this a couple times with other tanks, recent tanks that have that kind of alpha, because you're going to see a lot of 400 numbers when you hit low, low rolls. Now you're going to see some high ones, but you don't notice them, and it's it's not going to feel like a 500 alpha gun. It just that's it never feels like that to me. Uh, if I get a 560 or 580, I go whoa, that was massive, but I don't really feel like I'm always rolling 520. I know that's probably BS, but with with it being so close to 500, a lot of times you're going to notice that 400 damage shot a little bit more. So I just I just throw that out. It's probably all even and good. But back to what I was saying with the comparison. What would I say about it? Pretty maneuverable. I felt like it wasn't as maneuverable as a Scorpion, but it's pretty close. 
it really fights a lot like a Scorpion G. You just have to watch the weird half turret thing that you don't have 360. If you're not prepared or thinking about that, you can get yourself into trouble late game when you're maneuvering and trying to clean up and, and push to hit points and all that stuff. But other than that, it's the Scorpionski is a, is a valid name for this thing. It's very, very similar. All right, let's move on to my stats and how I did. So how did I do with the Scorpionski? I ran a 60% win rate in 20 battles, 859 average XP, and my average damage was 1,768, which is a little bit low. We'll take a look at that in comparison to my Scorpion G battle numbers, which I have 639 battles in that, so those are pretty well established. I did play all 20 battles on a phone hotspot, so I had a lot of disconnects and other shenanigans. I would say, without exaggerating, there were four battles where I had less than 100 to zero damage because I disconnected and ran off of something or just stopped in the middle somewhere and just died early being dopey. So I recovered to a 1,768 based on the strength of, of three or four really good games towards the end where I finally started to figure out. But what do the rest numbers look at look like? 71% hits. The Scorpion, for example, is 74. So these numbers really kind of show a slightly worse capability, at least for me, in the, in the, from the Scorpion G. 1.97 damage ratio is decent, whereas the Scorpion's at 2.22. 1.69 destruction, with the Scorpion being at 2.13. Scorpion's average damage in the 2000s, the Scorpionski at 17. So you can see, even though I'm running a 55% Scorpion G win rate, if I continued these numbers in the 1.30 p.m., more than likely I'd be 54, 55% running that thing solo over a long time. I would say somewhere around 100, 100 games, unless my... DPM came up, I would be around 55. But I believe with a better connection and starting to get more comfortable with this tank, I could at least do or exceed the Scorpion G. And I feel like probably exceed because the 130 PM, I believe, is a slightly better tank for what it does. A slightly better tank for what it does, which is try to hide in a bush and not be seen and drop some serious pain on people. 1.1 de destroyed per game is bad. That is the one thing I did not do well with this in 20 games. Is I got one game with three kills. So I didn't tend to kill a lot of tanks, even though my Tier 8 DPM was okay. But that's that's not great. Most of my good Tier 8s are in the 2000s to, to low 2000s to mid 2000s. But I think that would probably come up over time. After 100 battles, I would expect that to be 19, maybe 2000 to recover from the initial kind of poor gameplay right there. My assist is a little bit low there, but it's a TD. So unless you're tracking people... You're probably not getting a whole lot of assist. And my spotted should be low. That way I am not out in front dying, although I managed that a couple times. I might even show you one of those just as kind of a giggle about the things you need to watch out for with the Scorpionski. You certainly do not want to get overextended in this bad boy because you will be ended quickly. You might say, Guido, that uh, I don't think you really need to tell us that. But hey, let's, <laughs> who knows? Maybe somebody thinks it's a brawler. We'll, we'll fix that as we go. Let's take a, take a look at my setup. All right, as far as my setup goes, I put the Christmas camo or one of my free camos, so I definitely ran it with camo. You can see I've stripped everything off because I moved the equipment over to a different tank. But what was I running? I was running a rammer, I had a camouflage net, and I had the gun lane drive. As you can see, it does not have a vert stab, and it does not have vents, which are two of the kind of go-to things. So really, I recommend the rammer and the gun lane drive, and then whatever else you want, whether it's maybe optics, but I'd go with the binocular telescope if you wanted to maximize vision or if you want to maximize camo go with the camo net and I believe with vision saturation and the way that the maps are set up the camo net's probably your best bet by trying to spot for yourself with a relatively low vision range but that's going to be to taste however you want to roll with it so it's an interesting decision matrix here because it doesn't have a couple of the standard things that you might find on a regular tier 8 tank no modules to speak of they're all at top I ran 20 AP 8 heat and 2 HE. Let's talk quickly about the pen because you look at this, it's 2, 243 with a standard round and 320 with heat. Remember, that's heat, so you got to watch out for tracks and angled armor and things like that. So, with 320, when you dab number two on the Scorpion, what you're going to get when you dab number two is 311, which is slightly lower. So, a slightly higher standard pen, a slightly lower gold round, and the Scorpion shooting APCR with its requisite. Uh, problems with range and things like that. Uh, let's just take a look at the Ferdinand, for example. It's got 311, kind of low for the penetration with APCR. 
Go over to this big Chinese bad boy that flings heat around. This is the 1GFT. It's at 310, which is a little bit lower. So the gold round is actually pretty darn good. Now that's, I think that's Hess shooting kind of guy. Let's look at the Canon Jagdpanzer, which is one of the new ones. 268, which is quite high for a standard round, and then up to 330 with the gold round. So that number, that 310, let's call it 300 to 330 number, is pretty important because the super heavies, weak spots such as they are, and some of their flatter armor that's very thick, that 300 to 330 penetration number is about where you start getting that break-even point of a 50-50 pen depending on the angling and some other things. So once it gets a much higher than 330 up in the 350s, you're, you're kind of pinning everything in sight. Once you get to that 300 and lower, now you're really looking for side shots and, and specific weak points that are considerably weaker than the rest and that kind of thing. So this tank is right there, and with dabbing number two, should be able to handle most of your tier 10 opponents that you come up against no problem, which is good or bad, depending on what how you want to look. Look at that. I ran with a small kit, small kit for the first aid kit and a large fire extinguisher. I'd probably recommend large kits if you're gonna run premium, a premium tank, you might as well do that. You get so many of those free. If you're tight with your money, then put the small kits on. I always recommend a large fire extinguisher. I won't get into why, but if you want to, just ask me the question and I'll explain it. It's a long diatribe. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some examples of the Sioux 130 PM Scorpianski and how Guido did it. All right, yo, let's get into about three examples. I actually had three slightly better examples, but with the new patch, the replays are broken, which is highly irritating as a community contributor or somebody who tries to make content. But there you have it. So I played a few more games, and here we are on Mountain Pass. Yeah, Mountain Pass, and I've spawned into the northwest. I'm headed to the middle. I'm attempting not to run into this Mod 1. And getting a little bit of stagger there from the driving because of packet loss. So I'll come over here and look for some initial shots. And what we're going to see on this is that while this tank is mobile, it's not spectacularly mobile. I probably should have taken that shot. Really hanging it out there. I'm glad nobody spotted me because there are two artillery. And they could make my life miserable. That's one thing you will find is artillery and the derp guns will look for you. Just like a scorpion. Will search you out. They love to shoot you, so no shots there. I'll come back over this way. I'm bottom tier, which is what you were going to run into with any tier 8. Good news is this thing can handle them for the most part, but I'm going to show you a little bit of the derpiness of the gun. I mentioned that in the earlier bit, and it's a bit frustrating. It just feels worse than the Scorpion. Now I'm going to take a bad shot there. I actually go at the top armor, so I'm going to bounce off top armor. I, I do this again. I thought maybe he was flat plating it. I should have aimed a little bit lower, or then I thought maybe it'll go up to the side of the arc, side of the turret, and then I just blap it into the front again, and I press two because I need skill. And there you can see that lower plate. See how it's showing a green? That's where I should have been aiming on both those, and I may have already put a shot in. So finally get a shot. That one really goes center mass, so or right towards the pipper anyway. So that was okay. Finally get a shot in there, and most of that is my fault. But you can see that even as fully zoomed in, how big the dispersion circle is there so take another one I don't know where that one I assume I went high or hit the ground there wasn't a whole lot of him actually showing right there so I'll move forward a little bit team's got a bit of an advantage now it's a three to nothing advantage and our positioning is quite a bit better than theirs the IS-7 is over on the southwest side handling that the Conway E-50 got what they sent down the ice road stuff then we have this very strange, huge push going up the the middle bridge right there. And what I don't want to do is come around the corner with a Yog Tiger 4502 and whatever else is sitting back there. There's still some tanks unspotted. I'm just going to wait here for a minute. What I'd really like to get dead is this 277. Notice the 4502 is over there. He dies. 277 is still bottled up there. And that leaves the Brigetto and the Yog Tiger. And those are the ones I'm worried about. So we're going to take a look here. I got the Canon. Eight, Yog Panzer behind me, the 105. So I'm going to come out here. I kind of poke. I see him move. He lights up the tiger, and I think, oh, the tiger will be looking at him. So I'll just come around and shoot this guy because the tiger's looking at him. No, well, for some reason, he's looking exactly at me. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened there. 
the cannon was in my general area. That that was very strange. It might have been that I stuck the long nose of this thing. You can see how long it is. It is that is kind of painful. The turret is set back on the hole. You can see that it well, it's not center of the hole, it is on the back about third or so. So that is a bit tricky. I did poke the front end, so he may have seen the front end poke around much earlier. And then when I gave him the whole tank, he shot me from there. So here's the mobility, decent, right? And this thing is not going to go up hills very fast, as you can see right here. And its top speed's really only 40. I mentioned the 65 top speed. That's only downhill. This will not do 65 in a straight line under its own power. I'm trying to get a shot. I get a shot on the Progetto. I'm surprised the Progetto didn't just come kill me. He's probably worried about other guys seeing him. But in fact, he could have jumped all over me and clipped me out. But he runs off towards the middle. I guess he thinks he's going to stem that tide. Artillery came in. There's the two rolls I was talking about. I got a 45 and a 491. This is a 520 Alpha gun. And I went on about that a little bit earlier. It just feels like you don't very often get the 500 high rolls. And I know that's probably BS, but that's, that's the impression I came away with on this thing. Now it is fun when you hit that 580 or whatever, 590, those are those are fun. JT goes down, I get spotted. It turns out that the WZ thing, is that what it is, the WZ thing? Yeah, the WZ is actually, yeah, there he is. You can see him lit up now. For whatever reason, he wasn't looking over the edge when I showed up, otherwise I'd have eaten him. However, because he lit me, the 277 sees me, and then I'm able to just punch one right through the side of the 277. And this is not a massively, awesomely high damage game but at least you can see that it's got a little bit of flexibility and mobility and but even now see how slow it accelerates and we're doing 32 34 I'm just I'm just hitting W I'm going as fast as this silly thing will go 45 touched 45 down that little down slope and 38 40 on a level ground that's what you're gonna get that is it so the 65 is BS it's only downhill and the type 4 so that's important because a scorpion, not a scorpionski like this, would actually be moving along at a nice clip by about right now once it got up to speed. T10's there. I'm still firing heat. That is a bit tricky on pike noses like the T10, depending on what you're aiming at. He fires. I come around and I aim carefully. I'm going at the side of the pike. No oh boy. Either a crit, no damage, or it went far enough left and went into his track, or just simply, I don't know. Now, here's the interesting thing. See that Type 4? He's thinking about it. Can't even hit the hatch. Nice little derpy action. And now he just wants to shoot the very soft <laughs> Scorpionski, but he gets killed trying to get there by everybody else. And that's the kind of thing that you're going to get while you're driving this tank, and you've got a guy with a derp. He was just looking for a few more hit points. Obviously, uh, I think he could have got as many off any of the guys around him, to be quite honest, but... People see the soft tank with their derp gun and th they just start to see red. They want to take you down. All right, so there's a decent example, not damage-wise as far as the game goes, but of its, its relative mobility, a little bit of the derpy gun, and don't buy into the mobility thing because it is quite a bit less mobile than the Scorpion. It requires a little bit of care when you're attempting to push. Let's move on to the second. Here's a second example. We are on... Siegfried line and assault and <laughs> the maps and sides I got when I attempted to do a few more games in order to get you guys some gameplay footage out of this thing were all city maps or me assaulting with this lightly armored tank so it was it's a bit of a bummer so I'm gonna go to a kind of wishy-washy spot here and look to I'm a sniper man but I'll show you it doesn't quite get there now any guns probably gonna have a bit of an issue with that shot right there I did have an ace tanker in this earlier, about 4,000 damage and around 2,500 assist damage, but that was one of the games that disappeared when the patch came out. But I'm going to come up here and this time take a nice little aim on that dude, and there you go. So not bad, into the 50 TP. There you go, a high roll, 529, so they're not all 400s. Notice the decent, not great, but decent depression allows me to use this spot right here where some of the other Russian tanks would have more trouble and have to come up over top to do that. Now I make a, quite a few mistakes here. I'm just blapping shots into this T95. Then I go to heat 
And the T95 starts to give me a little side armor. And my AP would have had a much higher chance. I'm just sort of... This is just dumb. I'm going to shoot it. You know, that's never going to do anything with heat. Just a bad decision. So I'm looking at those guys. I lost my scout. I got a T95 behind me. And this team is really just not doing a very good job. There we go. There's another bounce. And that's going to bounce all day. I see the Comet. So I think, all right, this is a nice, soft guy right here. Let's go up here and see if we can get a shot on him. He doesn't know I'm there. This will be really great. So we'll just go ahead and zoom in on him and kit. And we'll hit the ground. <laughs> yep, hit the ground. Sometimes when you zoom in that much, you're actually aiming more at the ground. Or more of the ground is a factor to your shot than you really think. There's a crit no damage. Yep, that went into his track. Th this is... I felt like I got this a lot more than I should have with this gun. It just, and that, that's where I'm talking about the whole derpiness. It just really feels at times to be quite derpy. Shot coming back my way. Comet hits me with HE. Look at that, the HE firing Comet. That's something you don't see every day. I use my brain and go back to regular AP. Imagine that. And we take that. And there, you know, there's a kind of snapshot, and that went right to him. That's very uneven as far as this gun goes. Now we're starting to have a lot of trouble here. This is this is a big problem. T95 is moving down. I got some side armor to him. He's smartly moving towards me. I get hammered by the 53 TP. And there's the gun down. That's pretty common. Now, as this is a Scorpionski, it's got the same kind of idea of a turret, of a very soft turret with just kind of a metal guard right there. But anytime you get hit in the turret, it's very likely for you to lose a gun, especially if they go with the HE kind of shot. The, I see the SP1C, that's big trouble. I, I want to try to take this guy down, but he's got too many hit points to get hit. I'm able to put one in. There's a kind of snapshot right there, and then I get nuked from the Scorpion. Now, what's interesting is this shows a 3,000, there it is, 3,146. Ah, I lit the SP1C on fire. I did not realize that. <laughs> did not realize that the first time I went through this replay. That's why I had 3,000. When I came out of it, I thought I only had 2,800, and it ended up being 3,000. So three, this ends up being a loss. We can't push in here. The T95 just hung out by that bunker back there. You know, top tier T95 sitting at a bunker in the back on assault. There's, that's, that's not probably going to work very well. Plus, everyone else is dying to include me, which is not a good thing. So, again, another example of this is a standoff tank. The next one we're going to show a little bit more of the brawling capability or pushing capability as I'll be on Himmelsdorf top tier and I have to actually go out and find the enemy and do some damage. But here's an example of a little bit indifferent as a sniper and I real I know I said earlier that hey this is something that wants to hide and not be seen but it can be a little bit tricky in that case because the the gun is just not quite there. It really is, and, and I find the Scorpion G to very, be very similar in that respect. Sometimes the gun really lets you down, but this one seems worse than the Scorpion G. All right, let's move on to the third and final example. For the third example, I'm calling this one Scorpion-esque. Scorpion-esque. Scorpion... -esque. Scorpion Scorpionski-esque. There you go. <laughs> Have I used that joke enough yet? Is it dead? Have I beat that dead bad joke hard enough? No. We're going to keep on with it. Just like we're going to keep on driving up this hill very slowly. Another great example of how slow this thing is. Just doesn't have a lot of power. 400 horsepower. I mean, that, that's surprising. Most Russian tanks have 2,900 horsepower lately, don't they? <laughs> Anywho, up the hill, I felt like top tier here. I really needed to get the gun in the game. I didn't want to go down to Tank Alley because I just knew I was going to get the turret blapped constantly. I needed to go somewhere where I could be a little bit trickier. I could go over on the 1-2 line and camp, but that just really relies on the enemy to be stupid and walk into you multiple times. So if you're going to have any kind of aggression, I had a decent crowd coming up with me, so I'm going to head up here. Got the T-50-2 and the, whatever that is, E25, we got the LTTB, who's really come up, and very strangely, these guys don't jump all over them and kill them off, so I'm going to take advantage of that to drag up the rest of the guys behind me, and we're going to come down here, and I'm going to start trying to put shots, and this ends up working out. There's a snapshot, just drive forward and shoot. It's right under the charioteer. Goes right through his face, no problem. 
the Hawk is dangerous, the Progetto is dangerous, they've got all kinds of capability to shoot. Now, there's a little armor being made for me. There's another snap that goes right where I want it to. So in this case, the gun's working out so far. Now, they've got us outnumbered. Had they simply just pushed up here and got aggressive, they probably would have had a pretty good time. That, I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure it hit, looks like it hit the wall, so all the smoke. And the 3002 is just find a little pew pew 125. So at least as far as trading goes, I should be able to kill him here. Let's see. There we go, right through the mantlet. And the E25 jumps all over the poor T50-2s. They die. That's a good move. Now we just have to peel these guys out. And I'm going to come on here. I'm going to eat a shot from the hawk. Down he goes. 1,800. And now we've won here. Now this is tricky, a lot of times you feel like you can go here and really dominate. Me and this German guy are not really helping each other out too much. What I didn't realize is the 101 or whatever that is, the 100M1 M1 was actually looking at me. I thought he was looking the other way. So he puts a big hit on me right there, 245. Tiger Peach trying to kill him. Down he goes finally, and now I'm looking at the Cromwell, can't, can't quite get him. I'm going to take a bad shot on the... IS, I don't get him, but the Tiger P does. And now let's go ahead and get off of this hill. It's really clean up time. Oh, I'm sorry, I did take one more shot at the Cromwell. And it, I'm like, got him. No, he moved the second I shoot. <laughs> and that didn't have a whole lot to do with the gun. That just had to do with a good timing on his part, whether by uh, consciously or, or subconsciously or by luck. Now there's that speed going downhill, right? We can get to 65 going downhill. It feels quite sprightly right there. Come around the corner. We're at 1800. It's clean up on aisle two. And now I'm moving along pretty good in the city. I'm at actually like 50, 55, 56. So perhaps on the city street thing where there's not a lot of res terrain resistance, you can get up to 50 pretty easily and cook along. Looks like I didn't come much slower than that. So I carried some of that momentum down the hill and it does get up to the high 40s, maybe touching 50. 25 twos here, the E25. I'm just gonna come around and try to entice the E25 to come out and get a shot on him. He shoots me at 211. E25 is gonna go get him. And he decides to, oh, no, that's the 42 two. That's our own guy, just killed me. I didn't notice that. <laughs> Looks like the T25 slash 2 was trying to ram kill me, and I was able to get that shot in before he reloaded. And that E25 was killed by a 40 TP. Wait a minute, what's happening here? <laughs> yes, that was our 40 TP that killed him. That's a pretty good trick. I don't understand how he managed that. Oh, yeah, I guess he just had the angle. Looks like he was shooting at the 25, maybe, or something. I don't know, though. Anyway. <laughs> 2,663. The point of this one is to show you that, yes, top tier in a city map, it is useful. The half turret gives it a lot more flexibility. It's got enough speed to get there. You do have to be careful, though, because it has zero armor. So it's unlike a T-28 where you might go trundling down tank alley right there. This is probably not the tank you really want to take there. Maybe complement the lights and the mediums with the big stick and the decent mobility and the half turret and help them push through some other flank and then come around behind everybody. But there you go. There's the three examples. Let's wrap this thing up. Well, all right, that is it for the Scorpiansky, the Su-130 PM Tier 8 Russian Premium TD with the half turret. Kind of like a Scorpion. There is a marathon for it. I think it's well worth it. If, that, if you're playing the game and you like to play the game and you got the time to do it, then as far as that goes, it's worth it. Whether it's worth it for your money, that's up to you. Depends on how much money you have and all that kind of good stuff. If you can get the 70 or 80% discount though, which is actually fairly easy just playing, and 70% definitely, maybe 80%, I think it would be well worth the money at that point. But that's just Guido's opinion. Your results may vary. Overall, it is a solid TD. It's good because the Russians don't have a tier eight premium TD. It does have flexibility, unlike many of the casemate TDs. I do like that about it. I think it is a lesser shade of Scorpion, even with some of its advantages like its camo and the size being a little bit shorter. I just feel like the Scorpion is more flexible in the way that Watt is played, especially late game and cleanup phases and attempting to move around and repositioning. 
the Scorpion uh, owns it as far as that goes. The numbers, be wary. The numbers of the speed don't have a whole lot to do with the reality of how it drives in the game. Like many of the tanks, it cannot reach 65 level ground, for example, and its maneuverability in a scrum is relatively low. But it's a tier 8 premium Soviet TD, so as far as that goes, it's certainly worth it for a crew trainer. It can train any of the crews that you have for your Soviet TDs that you might like. That is all I got, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, thanks for supporting the channel, and we will see you.